You're not gonna touch me. Stop. Get off of me, man. Hey, get off of me. Uh, the security officer inside assaulted me. You'll be lucky you don't leave here in cuffs today. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna leave. Why would I leave here? Because you assaulted me on camera. I want to get to this courthouse before we're gonna make sure that security guard's held accountable. Welcome to the John Legato Show. I'm John Legato. You know, I did this video on Sean Reyes, which triggered some strong words and sentiments from his followers, his supporters. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but there was some name calling, which I last heard at Marine Corps boot camp in 1967. Hey, what's up, guys? Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. Today, we're at the United States Post Office here in Hagerstown, Maryland. Let's get into it. You know, I got a confession to make. When I first started viewing First Amendment auditor videos, I singled out Sean Reyes as the best of the bunch. He seemed calm, knowledgeable, and auditing for all the right reasons. But that has changed. Did you come up to me? 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 Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? You don't intimidate me at all. All right, so first things first, let's see if we can find the rules and regulations governing conduct on postal property, also known as Poster 7. The auditor's holy grail, uh, Poster 7. Reyes is uh, not only about to misquote Poster 7 on three major issues, and I defy any attorney watching my video or Sean Reyes himself to correct me. All requests from qualified news reporting services to film or photograph on postal service premises must be referred to the local public affairs and communications representative. Informal snapshots from handheld cameras for personal use may be allowed at the postmaster's discretion. We have people's personal information and everything else that you're not entitled to when you're doing a video. I'm, I'm not getting anybody's personal well, information. So number one, pointing a camera at a counter where personal information, including credit card info, is prohibited. The courts have determined that. But Sean just said that he's not getting this info. But watch this closely. Watch as the camera slowly scans the counter. Now, all auditors say that uh, anything the eye can see cannot be trespassed. And Reyes' eyes may not be able to see the screen, but his zoom lens on his camera can. Now, just imagine if you were uh, entering credit card info on the screen and the person behind you walks up next to you and stares at your personal information. That's what a zoom lens can do. Now we're supposed to believe somebody like Reyes, who states that that's not what he's doing, where you can see he is. But what does poster number seven actually say? No lighting or scaffolding may be set up, and no picture can depict any postal service employee, customer, security camera, or cover of mail, i.e. the exterior of a mail piece, which would show customer name and address, among other things. Postmasters may restrict any and all photography if they determine that it is disruptive or there are potential security concerns. The passport lady over here was extremely rude. And you know what? You know what, guys? I haven't seen Poster 7, the rules and regulations governing conduct on postal property. So let us look at Poster 7, which all auditors are magicians at quoting only one half of the paragraph pertaining to filming in a post office. According to the Postal Service's website, the general policy for photography and filming on Postal Service premises is found in subsection I of Poster 7 and section 124.58 of the Postal Operations Manual, both of which state that, quote, photographs for news purposes may be taken in entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums when used for public meeting. Now, this is the point where all auditors stop reading. But the rules and regulations continue except where prohibited by official signs or security force personnel or other authorized personnel or a federal court order or rule. Other photographs may be taken only with the permission of the local postmaster or installation head. Reyes continues pointing his camera at the counters. Ma'am, no one's videoing anybody. Ma'am, but you're trying to you're trying to cause a disturbance, please. You're causing a disturbance. No, I'm not. You weren't on the video until you put yourself in the video, ma'am. Okay, you weren't on the video until you put yourself on the video. You're in public, man. He's wrong. He's wrong. So stop making contact with me then. What's what's the issue? You're the issue. Okay, I think you are the issue, man. 
I'm going to jail. <laughs> you know, Sean's laugh sounds like snidely whiplash after tying the damsel on the railroad tracks. But he could be right when he predicts that. I'm going to jail. <laughs> Well, I can tell you I'm Officer Devers, this is Officer Krause, and I appreciate your videotaping everything, but um, the post office called and asked, said they've asked you to leave, so they would like you to leave. This is their property, and so they have every right to ask you to leave. You know, all auditors demand name and badge number, even if the officer is busy, say on, on the radio or in a conversation with another person. This is rude, and this officer is the very first cop that refused to reinforce Reyes' bad manners by stopping what he was doing. So, um, How you doing today, sir? Can I get your name and badge number, please? Sir? Can I get your name and badge number, please, sir? Look at the faces of the cop and the postal worker. You know, it appears that both of these have children who would now be reminded that it is impolite to interrupt adults. Sir? Can I get your name and badge number, please, sir? Are you going to arrest me if I don't leave? Yes. Can I speak to a supervisor, please? You're under arrest. I was ready to leave. You have no jurisdiction on this property. You know, I've covered this false auditor claim in several of my shows. Local police do have jurisdiction at post office simply because 98% of all post offices don't have gun-toting postal inspectors. So police departments have memos of understanding or are covered by exigent circumstances. I mean, just use your common sense. If a customer is causing a disturbance, say filming other customers' transactions or waving a gun, postal inspectors are hours from that location and they don't have the special operations abilities like SWAT or hostage negotiations. But please do, Sean Reyes. And lastly, we're going to settle this whole jurisdiction issue with local police being able to enforce the laws at a post office. You're not federal police. Why don't you call the federal police? You have no jurisdiction in this building. Mr. Gutterman asserts that only federal police officers have jurisdiction inside a post office and that the Silverthorne police officers do not, which may not be an accurate statement. Other properties acquired by the United States fall within the concurrent criminal jurisdiction of the state and federal government. However, even if the Silverthorne Post Office is a federal enclave, the Silverthorne police officers could still have the authority to protect the post office. According to Section 3061C1 of Title 18 of the United States Code, quote, The Postal Service may employ police officers for duty in connection with the protection of property owned or occupied by the Postal Service, or under the charge and control of the Postal Service and persons on that property, including duty in areas outside the property to the extent necessary necessary to protect the property and persons on the property. And, and here's the clincher. In fact, Poster 7 itself states that, quote, local postmasters and installation heads may enter into agreements with state and local enforcement agencies to ensure that these rules and regulations are enforced in a manner that will protect postal service property. So the next time you hear auditors begin quoting Poster Number 7, know that they are either lying or they're ignorant of the law. Right, Sean? All right, so first things first, let's see if we can find the rules and regulations governing conduct on postal property, also known as Poster 7. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations governing conduct on postal property? The John Legato Show is being broadcast from outside the gates of Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune in beautiful North Carolina. If you like the show, subscribe. doesn't cost you anything, and we don't ask for personal information. Semper Fidelis.